Hi everyone! Um, before I start, um, I would like to first extend my gratitude to you for inviting me to participate in this seminar in your math week. And I know that this pandemic has taken a toll on a lot of us and I hope that you're all well and in the safety of your own homes. And for the students, siguro nagtataka kayo anong ginagawa ko dito sa harap nyo, bakit ako nagsasalita dito. Well, I'm not currently teaching, I'm going to be honest with you, and my job's a little far from education and from math. But I guess one of our similarities is that I was once in your place. Actually, I studied there in your institution. I finished high school in St. James Academy, and I think some of the experiences that I had before are the experiences that you're having now. Katulad nitong mga to. So, na-experience nyo na ba ito? Yung parang nagtuturo si ma'am o si sir, tapos napalingon ka lang dun sa classmate mo eh, may sinabi ka lang, siguro mga 5 to 10 seconds. Tapos paglingon mo sa board, tapos na agad, may sagot na. So, hindi mo na nabasa or hindi mo na naintindihan yung solution. So, parang lost ka agad. Diba? Or minsan naman, hindi sobrang hirap na tanong. Sobrang dali. Tapos tatanungin ka ni ma'am o kaya ni sir. Tapos alam na alam mo yung sagot eh. Kaso nga lang, sasabihin niya, explain. So, ganyan yung magiging mukha natin nung talagang nga nga tayo. Okay? Or minsan naman, tambay ka sa Facebook. Tapos, makakakamakross ka sa isang uh, equation. Papasolve. Nag-aaway-aaway pa yung mga tao. Ito yung sagot dyan, ito yung sagot dyan. Tapos ikaw, parang Gina G ka. Diba? Parang sasagutan mo talaga. Pero pagdating sa school, wala na. Parang wala ka bang ka ba? Parang hindi talaga natin pinapansin yung math or talaga nilalayuan natin yung math. Or, pwede rin namang ganto Yung parang pagkatapos nung exam, nangyari sa akin to dati, pagkatapos nung exam, parang kampante ka. Parang sure na sure ako sa mga sagot ko. Tapos may lumapit sa yung classmate mo. Sabi niya, alam mo yung sagot nun sa number ganito? Feeling ko 5 eh. E may lumapit pang isa, sabi niya, hindi feeling ko 4. So nagtatalo pa sila, hindi 5, hindi 4. Tapos tahimik ka lang kasi yung sagot mo, 20. Ang layo. ba? Kaya naman, kapag dating talaga sa math, parang ganito lagi yung itsura natin. Parang, lag, parang lagi tayong naguguluhan, lagi tayong nagugulumihanan. Diba? Parang lagi tayong napapanganga kasi natatako tayo dun sa concept ng mathematics. Kaya nga pag naririnig natin yung word na math, parang for me dalawa yung uh, tanong na laging pumapasok sa isip natin. Lalo na nung medyo uh, iwas pa ako dyan sa subject na yan. Ano yung mga tanong na yun? First one, is ito. Bakit nga ba kailangan ng math? Lalo na kung halimbawa, yung gusto mo namang job in the future, hindi naman kailangan ng math. Ayaw mo naman mag-doktor, ayaw mo naman mag-engineer. Para saan pa yung math? So, parang gusto kong maging artista eh. Saan ko ba gagamitin yan? Diba? Yan yung isa sa mga lagi nating tanong. And the second one is this. Bakit ba ang hirap ng math? ba? Bakit ba kapag math, parang lagi napapakunot yung noo natin? So, these two questions, ito yung sana mabigyan natin ng sagot or sana matulungan ko kayo na makita yung kasagutan ng mga tanong na to using this seminar, which is entitled, Mindset, Viewing Math from Different Angles. So, to introduce myself, my name is uh, Rina May Mercado. I'm a licensed professional teacher. I graduated from University of Santo Tomas back in 2017. I had a degree in Bachelor in Secondary Education. I taught for two years there at St. James Academy. I taught uh, junior high school and senior high school math, of course. But after that, I kind of leaped into another job. And now I have been working as a composer for two years in a leading network in the Philippines. And so, I think, hmm, medyo nasa position ako para, sa, para sagutin yung mga tanong yun na, para saan ba yung math? Eh, hindi ko naman magagamit yan kapag nagtrabaho na ako. Kasi I don't use math on a daily basis in my work. Parang medyo napalayo talaga ako sa mathematics at sa pagtuturo. But, looking back, parang kapag iisa-isahin ko yung mga bagay sa buhay ko, talagang may mathematics pa rin. Hindi ko man ginagamit araw-araw sa job ko. Pero, 
around me, there is mathematics. Now, that's our first question. How is math relevant? Ano nga ba yung importance ng math sa buhay natin? Ngayon, magbibigay ako ng mga iba't ibang bagay or hindi naman ito lahat ng importance ng math because we have limited time now. Pero, uh, siguro, this could answer some of the questions that you have in your mind na parang wala namang math kapag lumalabas naman ako ng school or, kay, or pag lumalabas ako ng bahay. Parang, saan ko ba makikita yung math? So, eto mga simpleng bagay na minsan na overlook natin sa araw-araw na makakapagpaalala sa atin na math is everywhere. First, driving. You can ask your dad or your mom or anyone na kakilala nyo na nagdi-drive. Hindi man nila napapansin pero yung concept ng speed, yung concept ng pag estimate ng time ng travel or ng distance, lahat yan grounded sa math. Pwede nyo sabihin, eh, numbers lang naman yun. Saan ba nagsimula ang numbers? Siyempre, sa mathematics. Another one is when you're managing money. di ba Nung may baon pa, hindi ko alam kung may baon pa rin kayo ngayon, pero kapag may baon tayo, di ba parang um, iipunin talaga natin yung, uh, yung part nun para may bilin tayo na gusto natin or kahit mga simple yung bagay kung kailan tayo nagmamanage ng money. We use math there. Next, we have the concept of time. So, kapag schedule tayo ng mga bagay na dapat natin gawin sa isang araw or kaya sa isang buong linggo, isang buong buwan, kailangan din natin ng math. And also, kung gutom na kayo, katulad ko, so sa cooking or when you're preparing food, di ba, yung mga recipes natin, may mga ingredients dyan, kailangan saktong-sakto, tamang-tama yung, pagkaka, yung pagsunod natin dun sa mga nakalistang ingredients, lalo na when it comes to baking, kailangan-kailangan yun. Ano pa, ito, sports. So, I know na may mga athletes sa inyo or um, yung mga mahilig lang maglaro. Tapos, ang math, uh, may geometry sa sports. May statistics sa sports. So, kahit na uh, parang feeling nyo mas sporty kayo kaysa mas uh, nag-aaral ng math. So, meron pa ring math dun sa mga ginagawa natin. Next, of course, engineering. Diba? Sobrang importante niyan. Math is one of the major subjects in engineering. Siyempre, papasok ka ba sa isang building na sobrang taas na building, tapos malalaman mo hindi engineer yung gumawa. So, parang pagpasok mo pa lang, guguhu ba to sa akin? Parang ganun na agad yung may isip mo. Kasi parang hindi siya safe, ba? Diba? So, in everywhere you go, in every place that you go, merong math dyan. Kasi merong engineer na gumawa niya. Next, we also have data gathering. So, very timely ito ngayon eh. Katulad nung nagsimula yung pandemic, di ba nakikita natin yung pag-rise ng mga cases. Tapos talaga nakakaba. And without math, we won't notice na ay parang delikado na talaga to Or hindi marirealize ng mga researchers kung ano yung nangyayari, kung palala na ng palala yung covid kung wala yung mga data na nakukuha natin. And also, it's very relevant uh, nowadays since the election is um, is coming near. And I know that most of you are not voters yet. Pero kung sino man yung mananalo, kung sino man yung maluluklok na um, government officials, para sa future nyo kasi yun. Para sa future ng younger generation. And I hope that you are all um, keeping yourself updated with the news and I hope that you have your own voice kahit na mga bata pa kayo kaya nyo magsalita and kaya nyo may paniwalaan and last here in this list I ref yan so appliances appliances and machines all around you kahit na nakaupo lang kayo ngayon tignan nyo yung nasa paligid nyo kahit na anong appliance na makita nyo may math dyan so, hindi man kayo yung gumagawa ng mismong solution, hindi man kayo yung mismo nagsusolve. Yung mga gumawa ng mga appliances na yan, gumamit ng math dyan. Pagising nyo pa lang sa umaga, ang una nyo hahawakan, ang una nyo hahanapin, ay yung cellphone ninyo. And hindi kayo makakagamit ng cellphone kung hindi gumamit ng math yung gumawa ng mga phones na yan. Okay? So, just through this, we can see na math is everywhere. And math, hindi lang external ha. Kasi every time na nagsasagot tayo ng mga math problems or kahit yung mga simpleng mga patterns or yung mga age problems na nakikita natin na 
um, parang tinatanong lang kahit saan, um, nakaka-exercise siya ng brain. And sobrang importante niya because when I left teaching, um, there was a point na parang nafe-feel ko na parang hindi na gumagana yung utak ko when it comes to science or math. So sabi ko, parang i-exercise ko kaya. So what I did was, um, I tried to play Sudoku for like three times three times a day para at least na exercise ko yung brain ko. So math can be seen not just externally but also inside your body. Importante din yung math. Okay? I hope that uh, that answered the question why is math relevant or why is math important? It's because math is definitely everywhere. Now, dun naman tayo sa pangalawang tanong. Bakit nga bang hirap, hirap, hirap ng math? So why is math difficult? Now, we have 12 misconceptions about math. This is through research. Tapos, uh, medyo pasadahan lang natin sila. Tignan nyo kung meron ba kayong mga pinapaniwalaan dito sa mga misconceptions na to. So, first, men are better in math than women. I am a woman. I was a math major. Yung mga teachers nyo dyan, ilan ba yung babae? Kind of answers the question. For the statement. Math requires logic and not intuition. Um, minsan, alam nyo yung parang makikita nyo yung, makikita nyo yung tanong, tas parang, ah, feeling ko, ito yung sagot, pero hindi ka nang hula. Yung parang, gut feeling mo lang. And sometimes, yun talaga yung totoo. So, minsan, mathematical intuition is really important. Math is not creative. This uh, thought or this misconception, yung itatry natin i-disprove mamaya. You must, all, you must always know how you got the answer. So, minsan kasi parang sa sobrang lagi mo na siyang ginagawa, parang hindi mo na maalala kung paano na-derive yun. Which is, it's okay. Kasi na-develop na lang siya through practice. There is a best way to do math problems. Iba-iba tayo ng utak. Iba-iba tayo ng way kung paano nakakarating dun sa tamang sagot. It's always important to get the answer exactly right. So, minsan, nagiging approximate kasi yung mga sagot natin. Halimbawa, ang sagot daw ay 6. Eh, ang nakuha mo 5.99998. So, tama pa rin yun. It's bad to count on your fingers. This is what I really don't get. I didn't get this since I was in grade school. Pero for me, it's not bad. Kasi it's still counting. Mathematicians do problems quickly in their heads. Meron talagang mas uh, visual na learner or parang mas nakakagawa sila ng maayos kapag sinusulat nila. And hindi naman porket mabilis kang maka, maka-solve dahil inisip mo lang sa utak mo. Yun na yung concept natin ng magaling. It's not always like that. Math requires a good memory. Um, sometimes math is more on just memorizing yung uh, formula. Or minsan nga yung pinaka-root ng formula. Tapos dun ka na magde-derive uh, kahit on the spot. Diba? So, hindi naman lagi na kailangan na may good memory ka sa math. Basta dapat naiintindihan mo yung lesson, naiintindihan mo yung mga steps. Math is done by working intensely until the problem is solved. You can rest. Okay? Kapag napapagod ka na nasagutan yung isang problem, pahinga mo muna yung utak mo. Kapag nakabreathe na siya, tsaka masagutan ulit, minsan mas makukuha mo yung sagot. Some people have a math mind and some don't. Now, this I am guilty of kasi minsan um, parang feeling ko ah, baka magaling siya sa ibang, sa ibang subject. Siguro hindi lang sa math. And that's okay. Pero tama nga naman na siguro kaya um, yun yung naiisip ng ibang tao. Kasi yun yung sinasabi sa kanila na hindi, hindi ka lang talaga magaling sa math. Hindi, parang Paano kung maniwala siya sa sarili niya na kaya niya yung math? Ano kaya yung mababago dun sa mind niya? Now, this is the last one. There is a magic key to doing math. I think I said this earlier already, but 
we have different minds and we have different ways to come up with the right answer. We have different methods na magagamit and that is actually my purpose for today. My purpose for today is to help you see math from something difficult to something easy. Na hindi natin kailangan laging talikuran yung math. Hindi natin kailangan laging simangutan yung math. Na minsan, ang math pwede rin namang maging masaya. Now, I'm going to give you three methods. Tapos may mga itatakal tayo ng mga konting lessons. Pero, um, in this seminar, I wouldn't require you to get a pen and a paper and to solve but if you want to you are free to do so pero i just want this to be an easy conversation an easy talk between you and me kahit na hindi ko naririnig yung mga sinasabi nyo but i just want this to be light para hindi kayo masyado ma-pressure so hindi to masyadong mahirap gusto ko lang makinig kayo and hopefully you can pick up on the things that i'm gonna share and you can learn or you can use the methods that I'm going to that I'm going to teach you. Kung hindi man ngayong grade level na to, baka sa mga susunod the grade levels niyo. Okay? Let's uh, start with the first method. So, lagi natin naririnig to when it comes to math. So, this is trial and error. Okay? So, laging uh, familiar na familiar na tayo dito when it comes to math. Pero medyo balikan lang natin ang kote kasi baka nakakalimutan natin na may mga... Uh, questions naman na pwede natin gamitan ng trial and error. For example, linear equations. I think this is for grade 8 and um, kind of natatap din siya sa grade 7. Okay, let's try this one. Well, we're asked to solve for x. We have 7x plus 6 is equal to 20. Now, without using yung algebraic steps na ito, transpose yung 6 tapos di divide. Without using that, let's try trial and error, okay? So, what will happen if x is equal to 0? So, tama ba yung magiging equation natin? Let's try. So, if x is 0, we're going to multiply 7 by 0. That would give us 0. Plus 6, that is 6. And 6 is not equal to 20. So, mali na itong x is equal to 0. Now, let's try kung x is equal to 1. Kasi trial and error nga. Okay lang magkamali. Trial and error naman. Now, if x is equal to 1, 7 times 1 is 7, plus 6 is 13. And 13 is still not equal to 20. So, mali pa rin si x is equal to 1. Now, let's try 2. If x is equal to 2, then 7 times 2 is 14. And 14 plus 6 is 20, which is equal to to 20. Therefore, we got the answer, and the answer is 2. And we got it using trial and error. Let's move to the other topic. After linear equations, we have quadratic equations. Now, one of the ways to solve quadratic equations is through factoring, of course. For example, we're asked to solve for the values of x. So we have x squared minus 7x minus 30 is equal to 0. Now, kapag nagtuturo ako dati ng quadratic equation, sinasabi ko sa mga estudyante ko na ang una niyo tignan ay yung second sign. The second sign here is yung negative, nakatabi ng 30. Okay? Now, kapag negative yung sign, ibig sabihin magkaiba yung signs dun sa magiging factors natin. So, yung isa positive, yung isa negative. Tapos, after looking at the second sign, look at the first sign. So, since magkaiba yung signs natin sa factors, ano nga ba yung mas malaki? Ang sagot ay yung first sign. So, ang mas malaking number, yun yung magiging negative. Okay? Now, let's think of the factors of 30. Ano nga ba yung factors na 30? Siguro pwedeng 30 and 1. Sa so natin ilalagay yung mas malaki ulit doon sa katabi ng negative. So, let's try 30 tsaka 1. We're looking for factors na kapag inad ay magre-resulta sa negative 7. Okay? Now, negative 30 plus 1 is negative 29. So, that is not negative 7. So, mali na agad yung unang mga factors na naisip natin. Let's try 6 and 5 since trial and error naman to. 6 and 5. So, negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Still not negative 7. Now, let's try negative 10 and 3. Negative 10 plus 3 
is negative 7. Therefore, we got the right factors. That's negative 10 and 3. Now, let's try to solve for the values of x. So, x minus 10 is equal to 0. Tapos, let's transpose negative 10 to the other side. We get x is equal to 10. That's the first value. Second value is through x plus 3 is equal to 0. Transposing 3 to the other side, we get x is equal to negative 3. So, the values of x are 10 and negative 3. Okay? Now, we have word problems. Dito tayo medyo hirap na hirap. Kasi, di ba ang math puro x lang, tsaka y puro numbers, pat ang daming words na ngayon. So, let's try itong number problem na to. So, minsan nakaka-encounter tayo ng gato. What two numbers multiply to 40 and add to 30? Now, this could, this could be solved by using x's and y's. Pero, this time, try natin na trial and error muna. So, what two numbers multiply to 40 and add to 13? So, let's think of the factors of 40. Okay? Ano ba yung mga factors ng 40? Pwedeng 1 and 40. Kapag ba inad yung dalawa, magiging 13? No, that's 41. So, that's wrong. Let's try 2 and 20. 2 times 20 is 40. That's correct. Pero, kapag inad sila, that's 22. So, mali pa rin. Let's try 4 and 10. 4 times 10 is 40, but when added up, would result to 14, which is still wrong. Pero itry natin yung 5 and 8. So, 5 times 8 is 40, and when added, will result to 13. So, these are our two numbers. Okay? And, I think this is the last for trial and error. We have proving. So, I think this is for grade 8 or grade 9. Um, in proving, kaya natin magamit yung trial and error when it comes to finding counterexamples. Now, para sa mga hindi nakakaalam, ano nga ba yung counterexample? So, a counterexample is a special kind of example that disproves a statement or proposition. So, for example, ang statement ko, buong January umuulan. E kaso, nung January 11, hindi umulan. So, yung January 11, yun yung counter-example ko dun sa statement na buong January umuulan. So, parang ganun siya. Now, that is very situational. Pero, try natin na gawin na gawin nating math. Okay? For every integer n, n cubed is positive. So, let's do trial and error. Tignan natin kung ano yung mga values na pwede nating ilagay sa n. So, if n is equal to 1... 1 cubed, or 1 times 1 times 1, is 1. So, positive na. So, baka tama. Try pa natin. If n is equal to 3, 3 cubed, or 3 times 3 times 3, is 27. Still, positive. Baka tama nga tong statement na to. But, remember, na kapag sinabi natin integer, hindi lang lahat ng positive, kundi lahat rin ng negative. So, let's try a negative number. If n is equal to negative 2, negative 2 cubed or negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2 is negative 8. And negative 8 is not positive. Therefore, this is our counterexample. So, I hope that you got something from trial and error. Now, let's move to the other method. Now, ito naman, sabi kanina, hindi daw kailangan ng... Uh, good memory sa math. Pero, hindi naman natin may iwasan na may mga formula tayo na kailangan i-memorize, may mga terms, may mga words tayo na kailangan i-memorize. So, para mapadali yung buhay natin, isip tayo ng ways para mas mapadali yung pag-memorize natin. Okay? Now, I hope that you're familiar with the word mnemonics. So, mnemonics yun yung mga binubuo nating terms na minsan tayo lang nakakaintindi. Tapos, kinukuha natin yung mga first letters ng mga words na kailangan nating i-memorize para mas madali natin siyang ma-recall. So, for example, when it comes to order of operation, sobrang sikat na nito. Alam niyo na tong lahat. So, we have PEMDAS. Parenthesis, exponent, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So, let's try one example. So, 4 plus 7 times 4 divided by 2 is... So, syempre, alam natin ang uunahin natin dyan ay yung multiplication, which is 7 times 4. And 7 times 4 is 28. Ang susunod natin ay yung division. 
So, 28 divided by 2. So, that would be 14. And syempre, ang last part na ay yung addition. So, 4 plus 14 is 18. So, the answer here is 18. Kaso, paano pa ganito? Nakita ko to sa Facebook dati, parang ang daming nag dahil dito. Na ito yung sagot. Hindi, ito yung sagot. So now, let's try to um, come up with one single answer. Okay? Now, meron tayong nakikitang parenthesis. May nakikita tayong division. May nakikita tayong addition. But, yung parenthesis na yan, ibig sabihin yan, unahin lang natin yung nasa loob. So, unahin natin yung nasa loob. That's 2 plus 2, that's 4. So, ang magiging equation na natin dyan, or ang magiging uh, expression na natin dyan ay 8 divided by 2, and not parenthesis anymore, times 4. Again, 8 divided by 2 times 4. Okay, so inuna lang natin yung nasa parenthesis. Now, 8 divided by 2 times 4, sabi, una daw yung multiplication kaysa division. So, ano unahin natin? 8 divided by 2? O 2 times 4? Now, when it comes to PEMDAS, pwedeng magkabaligtad yung M at saka yung D. So, depende siya sa kung ano yung mauuna dun sa order. So, in this case, nauna yung division. So, ang PEMDAS pwede rin maging PEDMAS. Okay? Ang PEMDAS pwede rin maging PEDMAS. So, since nauna yung division, unahin natin yung 8 divided by 2. So, that would be 4. Then, 4 times 4, the answer would be 16. So, yung mga nakasagot ng 16 before, congrats sa inyo. Okay? Alright. Now, next, we have the metric system. So, I think this is for grade 7. Yeah. Hirap na hirap akong kabisaduhin yan dati. Pero, meron pa lang mga statements na pwede tayong kabisaduhin para mas ma-recall natin yung pagkakasunod-sunod ng metric system. Like this one. King Henry died drinking chocolate milk. So, medyo dark siya, no? Sorry. Pero, yeah, we can memorize that. Para mas mapadali yung buhay natin when it comes to metric system. Okay, halimbawa, nakalimutan mo, ano nga ulit yung sunod ng senti? Tapos, kapag naalala mo tong statement na to, marirealize mo na, ah, chocolate milk. Mili pala. Okay? Now, eto famous din to. Famous to when it comes to math. So, we have the FOIL method, and this is used for quadratic equations. Yan, for example, we have 2x plus 3 times x minus 6 is equal to 0. So, using the FOIL method, F stands for first. So, we multiply the first terms muna. So, 2x times x would be 2x squared. Next, O stands for outside or outer. So, 2x times negative 6 would give us negative 12x. I stands for inner or inside. So, 3 times x would result to 3x. And L is, of course, last. So, 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. So, let's not leave out yung equal to 0. Okay? Now, just to combine like terms, we're going to add negative 12x and 3x. So, we're going to get 2x squared minus 9x minus 18 is equal to 0. So, that's using the FOIL method. Now, ito, medyo, uh, this was fun for me to recall. Now, dati kasi, ang alam ko lang sa pi ay 3.14. Parang gets na naman agad siya, 3.14. Eh, kaso pag sinabi ni ma'am na, ay, gusto ni ma'am ng challenge, gusto niya mas mahaba sa 3.14. Para may, hmm, may ganong effect naman kayo, di ba? Pwede niyong kabisaduhin to. May I have a large container of coffee? Bakit yung kakabisaduhin yan? Because kung ilan yung mga letters sa kada isang word na yan, nagko-correspond dun sa digits ng pi. So, may 3, I, 1, have 4, A, 1, and so on and so forth. So, dyan pa lang sa statement na yan, alam na natin na pi is 3.1415926. O, ba? Mas marami na tayong alam dun sa digits ng pi. Or, kung gusto nyo pa ng challenge at gusto nyo mas mahaba, ito yung kabisaduhin natin. 
but sobrang dami na talaga. How I need a drink, alcoholic of course, after the heavy lectures involving quantum mechanics. Hindi ito isinasabuhay ha, kakabisaduhin lang natin. Okay? So, nadamay pa yung quantum mechanics. Now, uh, by uh, memorizing this statement or this sentence, makuha natin ito. 3.14159265353 58979. So, kulang na lang maging phone number siya sa sobrang haba. ba? Okay. So, after mnemonics, meron pa tayo mga ibang pwedeng gawin para mas ma-memorize natin yung mga ibang terms or yung mga ibang steps when it comes to math. So, we can use our hands. Okay? So, I'm going to teach you and although alam ko naman na siguro halos lahat kayo alam na yung multiplication table pero this is just Fun to learn. So, when we multiply by 9, we can use this hand trick. So, in this case, this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay? So, for example, we're asked to multiply 9 by 3. Okay? So, this is 1, 2, 3. I'm just going to put this down. And this is the answer. We have 27. Okay? 27. Now, another one. For example, we're asked to multiply 9 by, let's say, 8. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We're going to put this down. And this is the answer. How many fingers here? We have 7. The remaining, 2. So, that is 72. Okay? So, ganun lang siya. Okay? And, ito, very important siya. Very uh, useful to sa akin dati. And dun sa mga naging studyante pa rin. So, the hand trick involving unit circle. So, wag sana kayo mabigla sa sign, cosine, and tangent. So, for example, in this case, you just need one hand. This is 0, this is 30, 45, 60, and 90. For example, we're looking for sine 45. So, ang sabi dun sa table, we're going to count from zero, tapos kung ilan man yun, kung ilan man yung fingers na yun, yun yung ilalagay natin dun sa box, na merong square root of box over 2. Okay? So, we're going to count from zero. This is 45. Baba natin to. So, ilan to? 1, 2. So, we're going to input 2 inside that box. So, sine 45, the value of sine 45 is going to be square root of 2, over 2. Okay? Ganon kadali lang using your hand. Now, let's try cosine naman. Let's try cosine 30. This is 0 and this is 30. Let's put this down. Now, sabi dun sa table, we're going to count from 90 and this is 90. So, ilang fingers to? 1, 2, 3. We have 3. So, kung i-input na natin doon, magiging square root of 3 over 2. Okay, sana naiintindihan. Now, last, we have tangent. For example, we're looking for tangent 60. Now, asan ba 60? 0, 30, 45, 60. Ito yung baba natin. Ngayon, dun tayo nag sa tangent. Okay? So, yung sine and cosine, that's square root of over 2. Now, for tangent, that's square root of over square root of. Okay? So, yung numerator daw natin, kunin natin from 0. So, we have... 1, 2, 3. So, we're going to input 3 dun sa loob ng square root. So, that square root of 3. Over what? So, let's look for the denominator. Let's count from 90. May isa lang to. And what is the square root of 1? That's also 1. Therefore, square root of 3 over 1 is also simply square root of 3. Okay? So, sana um, may na-pick up kayo na method or in a way para mapadali yung pagmememorize ninyo. And now, let's move on to the last uh, technique or last method. And this is very special to me. Incorporating your hobbies. So ever since I was in college, we had a project na may isa kaming album na deploy sa mga uh, public schools na puno lang siya ng mga songs. Original songs, original compositions namin na about math and kami mismo yung nag-arrange, kami mismo yung nag-create, kami mismo yung nag-compose. 
and hopefully it helps some of the students. Pero dinala ko yung practice na yon when I started teaching in St. James Academy. Bakit? Kasi mas nabubuhayan akong magturo kapag nasasama ko yung hobby ko or yung passion ko doon sa ginagawa ko. And all the while, I am hoping na sana ma-appreciate din ng mga estudyante ko and sana merong mga mahilig kumanta or mahilig sa music na mas matututo sila kapag ginagawa nila or kapag na mas matututo sila kapag sinasama yung music doon sa inaaral nila. Okay? So let's try this. Sana mag-work din sa inyo. Okay? So since I was teaching grade 9 back then, so during the topic of quadratic equations and one of the ways to solve quadratic equations is through completing the square. Medyo mahirap kasing kabisaduhin talaga yung steps at nakakalito yung steps na completing the square. So, what I did was I thought of ways para mas mapadali yung pagmememorize ng steps. Tapos, narinig ko tong kantang to. If you're familiar with this, although this is a little old, uh, it's entitled Back at One by Brian McKnight. Sana meron, pang, meron pa sa inyo na familiar sa kanta na to. But if not, I'm gonna sing it anyway. Um, when I heard it, para siyang tama or para siyang madaling uh, kabisaduhin para lagyan ng steps. Okay, so this is the original lyrics and I'm gonna sing this for you. And hopefully, ma-recall nyo kung narinig nyo na to dati. Sana hindi pa masyadong luma para sa inyo. Okay. So this is entitled Back at One by Brian McKnight. And this is the original chorus. Okay. One, you like a dream come true. Two, just want to be with you. Three, girl, it's plain to see that you're the only one for me. Four, repeat steps. One, two, three, five, make you fall in love with me. If ever I believe my work is done, then I'll start it back at one. So that is the original song. Tapos, I modified the lyrics into something na maswak dun sa completing the square. Kasi ang layo naman ito, di ba? Falling in love. Okay? So, this was the lyrics that I did. Okay? I'm gonna try to sing it. And if you want to copy the lyrics, it's fine. You're free to do so. And we're going to um, practice it mamaya na meron ng equation. So, same tune, same melody doon sa back at one. Pero binago ko lang yung lyrics niya. It. Dati, kapag ginagawa ko to, I was singing while I was writing on the board para mas ma-recall ng mga estudyante ko. Pero let's try to use PowerPoint. Okay? So, for example, ang given ay 2x squared plus 8x minus 48 is equal to 0. Okay? So, ang sabi dun sa lyrics natin, 1, you're gonna make a 1. Now, our A here is 2. Kasi diba, ang B natin ay 8, at ang C natin ay negative 48. So, if our A is 2, paano natin magagawang 1, yung 2? So, we're going to divide each term by 2. So, that would result 2, x squared plus 4x minus 24 is equal to 0. So, okay na tayo sa step 1. Okay? Now, step two. Two, you let the constant move. Now, ang constant natin dyan ay negative 24. So, how are we gonna make it move? Ano move daw? So, we're going to move it to the other side. We're going to transpose negative 24. So, that would give us x squared plus 4x is equal to 24. Naging positive na siya nung minug siya. Okay? Now, step three. Three... Leave a blank for C and do the same thing to the right hand. Okay? 
Now, leave a blank daw. So, from that uh, equation, we're going to have this one. So, we're, we're going to have x squared plus 4x plus blank. Blank lang muna siya. Is equal to 24 plus blank. Okay, next step. 4, you get the half of b. 5, square it then you make it c. Yun. So, yung b natin na 4, kinuha natin yung half. So, naging 2. Yung, yung 2 sa baba. Tapos, in-square natin yung 2, naging 4, ginawa natin siyang C. And then, we add it also to the other side. Kaya nakita natin, naging 24 plus 4. And you factor to survive. Now, we factor. Kaya ako binabay yung 2 dyan kasi gagamitin na rin natin siya. So, ito yung magiging equation na natin. Okay, so we uh, we have x plus 2 squared minus 28 is equal to 0. So that is using completing the square. Okay, now I also included songs na original yung melody. And um, I don't expect you to memorize this or anything. Pero siguro just to encourage you, siguro meron naman sa inyo mga nagsusulat kung gusto nyo na sarili nyo melody kasi mas marerecall nyo yun kapag kayo yung gumawa eh. Hopefully, ito pag pinakinggan nyo, kung medyo catchy sa inyo, pwede nyo rin, uh, pwede nyo rin gamitin. And um, this is just to encourage you to incorporate your hobbies. Hindi, lang, hindi naman lahat kayo ang hobby ay singing. Kung gusto nyo gumawa kayo ng steps for dancing sa math or kaya drawing, ba? So, kanya-kanya tayo ng trip, kanya-kanya tayo ng way para intindihin yung math. So, don't just limit yourself to books and to articles and kung ano yung mga nakasanayan na natin kung paano gawin yung math. You can do it your own way. Okay? So, here's another song. So, this is for equations of a line. So, we have four forms. Okay. And this is the song for that. Medyo mahaba lang. Here goes. There were four forms in writing the equations of a line. Let us call them S, S, B, and I. S for standard. S for slope and intercept. P for point slope. Um, parang tinandaan ko na lang na yung pagkakasunod-sunod is first the standard and then slope intercept and then point, point slope and then intercept. So, hindi ko na inulit na standard yung AX plus BYC. So, alam ko lang na sunod-sunod yung mga nakalagay dyan na forms. Okay? And the last song is this one. It's for the coordinates. Now, you may think na madali lang naman to, di ba? 1, 2, 3, 4, positive, 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 negative. Pero minsan kasi nakakalimutan natin kailan ba yung positive, positive, kailan yung positive, negative, and so on and so forth. So, here's a simple song. Siya. There are four quadrants in a plane Let us name them all you say Say one, two, three, four Say one, two, three, four In the first everything is positive In the second negative, positive In the third everything is negative In the fourth what's left, positive, negative These are the signs of the coordinates 
those three songs hopefully could help you in memorizing the concepts or the steps na medyo mahirap i memorize when it comes to math and hopefully um through the methods and the ways that i taught or the ways that i helped you recall kasi feeling ko naman familiar na kayo dun sa iba dun sana mas naintindihan nyo na math is not something na dapat natin katakutan pwede rin naman natin i-embrace ang mathematics and I hope that I helped you see that math could be easy that math could be enjoyed and that math could be fun okay sometimes it's all about mindset kaya ngayon yung title ng seminar natin ngayon because mindset is important. Sometimes it's all about how you see math and how confident you are in yourself. And sometimes, dun lang tayo naglalak sa self-confidence. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video and I hope that you learned something or picked up on some things that I, that I showed, that I taught you. And I must say that this was really an honor to speak in front of you students, kahit na hindi ko kayo nakikita. And it has been fun, kind of reliving my teaching days through this speakership. And lastly, I want to thank you all for listening. Again, I hope that you learned something from me today. And sana nabawasan ko na konti yung anxiety and fear nyo when it comes to math. Thank you so much and God bless you all.